All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing today, which is to set up a new project with the HDRP pipeline. I want to start very basic. This is just going to be covering how to create a project with that pipeline and then showing you a couple of the effects. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I have the version that I want you to have, which is 2018.2.17 F1. Uh, at the time of that video, this was the latest version. So I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to be selecting a template. So here under templates, we have 2D, 3D, 3D with extras. And then of course, the one that we want to use, which is the high definition rendering pipeline and then LWRP template. So I'm going to be selecting HDRP. This is going to be the project name. I'm just going to do HDRP demo and then the location of the project. Just click on create. So this is going to take a little bit of time to create. So I'll just continue on as soon as it's done. All right, guys, so looks at this finished building and we have the sample scene that Unity provides with the template. As you can see, we have kind of like a construction scene. We have, you know, shadows. We also have a few reflections and then shadows on these areas. So if I click on the scene view, you can see that we have, you know, the demo scene with various subjects. Like I was saying, we have our reflection props that you can see. If we select it, you can see the reflections, how they're showing. I can also select this other one right here, which is behind the wall. And then of course, this one that is on the side that is basically capturing the reflections from this other object in here. So if you need to, if you need to find out how to apply effects, and those are one of the things that I want to cover. There are a few objects on the hierarchy that get created automatically. I'm going to be doing other videos and diving into these. I already have some, but I think I need to update them. So, of course, we have the main camera. That's that's basically what you're going to have on every scene, and specifically the sample scene. By default, we also have a directional light. And the default, default post-processing, it has a volume object. And this one is going to allow you to select different objects, such as different effects, such as the tone mapping, in this case, bloom, and then exposure. These are not required out of the box. These are just the ones that Unity selected by you know under template but if you want to let's say you didn't want to include tone mapping you can go here and then just basically uncheck it and then now we don't have to tone mapping on that mode or you can just uncheck them in here just like i did before if you want to change the mode you can change it to you know if you wanted to do neutral if you didn't want to do any tone mapping you can also set the mode to none I'm gonna uncheck it so let's go back to the acs which actually gives it a really cool look and then of course the bloom, if you want to increase the bloom on this volume, you can you can do it as well. And you have other options such as scatter, the tint, if you want to add a texture, and also the intensity of the texture. So I'm not going to mess around with that. And then of course you can also go into advanced, which gives you some more control on the resolution. If we want to go to exposure and you want the scene to be automatically calculated on exposure, you can set it to automatic. If you want to do fix, we can also enable this and then basically control it with this slider here. So I'm just going to set it to automatic because I think that gives it a really, you know, a really good look. And then, of course, if you want to change the weight here, let's say that you have multiple volumes, you can just uncheck this global and then control the weight of the of the volume. In this case, it's going to require that we add a collider. I'm not going to cover this in this video. I think that goes into a more in-depth video. And then we can just go back here and set it back to one. So you can also add other effects if you want to use, you know, fog, if you want to use lighting. Of course, you can use post processing. It looks like ray tracing is also available in this version of Unity, shadowing, sky, and visual environment. So I'm not going to cover that. I just want you to know that those are available. If you go into the scene settings on the post process, we also have another volume. So it looks like in this one we have. On this template, we have a default post-processing volume. And then the priority on this one is zero. So the priority on this one is negative one. So that it's how that handles the different. If we were to uncheck this, you can see how that is changing the scene. And that's because it's our layer. So this one, it's taking, you know, it, it's taking priority over this one, which is zero, because the other one, it's more of a, it's a negative number. So if we were to increase this and then decrease this one, doesn't actually make any changes because I think when they're layered, both of them have the same way. But if you wanted to change the priority, you could change the priority on them. In this case, they both have the same way, so it doesn't really matter the priority that we have set. I'm just going to set it back to negative one. 
and then make sure that I have zero. So on this other volume, we have vignetting. So that's where we're getting the little vignetting around the corners. You can also change that as well if you like. If you wanted to make it stronger, you can make it stronger. And of course, if you want to offset it, you can also offset it. So that's what the vignetting is. And then it looks like we also have exposure. In this case, it just has a different compensation value and also a different limit. So I'm just not going to change that. And then white balance, if you want to modify the balance, you can do that. And then if you wanted to enable tint, you can also change that. And then, of course, this one has a little bit of chromatic variation. So if you want to increase it, you can increase it as well. And it's going to, you know, of course, it's going to allow you to do that. Then if we go into rendering settings, looks like this is another volume. So, so far we have three different volumes. This one is also global. It's also applying a weight of one. The priority is zero. And then in this case, we have shadows on. So if I were to uncheck this one, you can see that the shadows are changing. So different shadow settings. Also, the visual environment in this case is, is procedural. So the way that this works, if you add a visual environment, it's going to allow you to change, you know, depending on what you select. In this case, I select it. It's a, it has procedural sky selected. But if you wanted to change that to be a different type, like a gradient sky, you can, or HDRI sky, you can do that as well. So with the procedural sky, we can do, you know, if we wanted to enable the sun disk, if we go into scene view, you can see that we're now, it's, yeah, there we go. We can now see the sun actually showing on the sky. If I want to disable it, you wouldn't see it. If you want to change the size of the sun, we can do that as well. Also, you know, different settings to control how the sun looks and how it reflects against the scene. So you can now see, it's actually really hard to see if I just change those. But if you increase, you know, the exposure, of course, that's going to change the how much so how much the exposure of the sun reflects to on the actual 3D models. So that's that's how the procedural sky, sky works. It's very similar to the procedural sky material that you add to, you know, as a shader in Unity when you're using the standard materials. And also ambient occlusion, we have ambient occlusion available here. And the intensity, it's not as high. And you can also change that if you like. I don't see it as getting applied, or it's really hard to see in this scene. But with ambient occlusion, you kind of get you know shadows on the edges. And the hotter, the more that you apply, the the hotter the edge is going to be. But in this case, oh, it looks like there we go. So it looks like we're getting it just a little bit. It's just really hard to see, but you can play you can play around with that with those settings. The fog that you see on the on the background. It's also generated by this effect. So you can see that if I were to uncheck this, now we don't have any fog. It just looks really plain. But if I enable it now, we still, we, you know, we see fog on the distance. And if I change the values, you can control the fog. You can also determine if this is going to be a distance fog or not a distance fog. So I can just undo that. And that gives you, you know, that level of detail that you can apply. So. That's honestly everything that I wanted to show you. Just, just know that if you need to use HDRP, you can just use the, you know, the template. Look at some of these settings, and then, you know, it depends on how you want to organize your scene. But that's everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.